Hey, what is up everyone? Today we're going to be taking a look at the figure rise standard Kikoru Shinomiya from Kaiju number 8. First of all, I'm going to mention that I got this right here through Hobby Link Japan. You can too, link is down there in the description. And all I can say is Bandai is really starting to blur that line between buildable model kit anime girl figure and well I guess your usual anime figure. For example, this right here costs about $30, just a little bit less. When it actually comes to the upcoming SH figure arts of the exact same character, that costs twice, exactly twice the amount at $60. And I have to say, I am incredibly impressed. And this is coming from someone who's to hate, absolutely despise Bandai's anime figure model kits. So let's check it out. So we'll mention first off that this is not the first Kaiju number no. 8 model kit figure that I've taken a look at. I've actually looked at the Kaiju number no. 8 itself, so if you do want to see more about that, you can check out that review. Long story short, it was ridiculously good. And the same goes for this right here. Winding back towards the build, inside of this high-grade Gundam-sized box, you get eight runners of plastic. Some of them are very, very small. One of them actually is just a pre-printed face. And kind of just getting a little bit ahead of myself in case you're wondering right now. Yes, there are non-pre-printed faces too that you kind of have to do yourself. And because what I'm talking about today is an anime I don't really talk about all that often, I will kind of approach this as if, well, you're watching and you don't know much about model kits. So yeah, there are eight runners of plastic inside of this box, all of which are color accurate. So it does mean once you have this built, you've got a color accurate version of Kikoru right here. Besides the regular runners of plastic, like I mentioned, we do have one pre-printed face in here. We've got two different sheets of stickers. The first one is standard stickers. So you just peel them off, stick them on. And the other sheet then is water slide decals, which you have to dunk in water, then slide them off and set them onto the surface of the kit. Finally, then we do have this very interesting little thing right here. And this is for the various straps on the anime character right here for the assault rifle as well as the mask. So once you get all your runners slapped onto your desk in order to build this, you're going to need yourself at least a nipper in order to get this built. But I do recommend a nipper and some kind of file or sanding sticks. Basically, you just cut this off the runner. It cuts into a bunch of parts. And for each various element on this character right here, like the legs, torso, arms and head, you end up with a whole bunch of little pieces you need to stick together. The build is incredibly, incredibly simple. It's also very intuitive, so even if you've never built a kit like this before, or you have built kits like this before, it is still fun, interesting, but easy to do. All of the various tiny little details on this, from the white sections on the boots, gauntlets, shoulder pads, spine section up back, all of that is color separated. We also have some nice militaristic green on the knees, holster, side pouch, as well as the upper body armor. Like I mentioned, popping it all together is super easy. Everything fits just right. There aren't really many marks when it comes to cutting this out, but I will mention there are a few on mine because I cut it off in one snip, so I built it relatively quickly. When it comes to the head, it's just as impressive as everything else. You build the inside section of the head, the various aspects of the hair, it all connects together almost seamlessly. It's been done in such a smart way. And we even have color separated aspects to make sure the inside of, well, her mouth is inside of mouth colored, as well as recessed, which makes it look a lot better than a print. Now, when it does come to the difficult aspects of this kit, if you just build it like this, just with the face that's in here, it's no effort, no issue whatsoever. You do have just sticker peel and stick style stickers from the shoulders, and that is simple. You're pretty much done. However, there is the more difficult aspects in here, and that is the water slide decals. Now, I found these definitely intermediate to do. They're not exactly beginner friendly, but if you have experience with water slides, you shouldn't do too bad. But lining up the eyes can be incredibly hard. The difference between this character, well, looking like Kikoru should, and looking like an absolute bootleg figure is a fraction of a millimeter in any direction. It is quite tough. Also on the shoulders, there are some aspects that are quite difficult too because of the way it's built. So if you move the shoulder pads apart, this little circular section you can see right there actually protrudes out. So this can break your water slide decal. When you're building this, I do recommend cementing these 
flush and then letting it dry before doing anything else. I didn't do that though, so this is going to be a bit of a headache. But just in case you're curious as to how I did the various decals on this kit, because they did turn out surprisingly well. I am very impressed. I learned pretty much how to do this from painting Warhammer, and these are all Warhammer techniques. First off, it's the usual routine. You grab yourself some lukewarm water, and then you dip your decal for three seconds and three seconds only, then whip it out again. You don't want that water washing away your nice sticky, sticky stuff. While you have that damp to the side, you grab yourself some micro set and micro sol. Now I find these infinitely better than using mark setter and mark softer, which tends to be what people build in Gundam kits and model kits tend to use. I find they work a lot better. Micro set goes on before you slide your decal onto it, so it helps it adhere. Then you wipe away all the excess water, especially from underneath it, and then put it to the side to dry. Once it is dried, you hit it then with the micro sol, and what this will do is melt the decal onto the plastic. Now, this is not the final step. Usually you could just leave it like this, but you're at risk of losing your decals and you can still kind of see the edge. Now, what I would usually do in this situation is I would use a top coat on it, but the weather right now is absolutely horrendous, which means if I do use top coat, it can go a little bit funny and ruin everything. So what I did, and I didn't know if this would work out, I grabbed Citadel's Storm Shield Varnish. So this is basically something you'd put onto Warhammer models as a varnish. It's a matte varnish, and I didn't really know how this would work out. You basically just slopping it onto a model kit. I did that, I just rubbed it on with a brush. It's quick, it's easy. I put it onto only the areas that needed protection, including the various faces, and this dried exceptionally well. I mean, you would not know these faces, well, that the eyes are actually stuck onto them. It looks like they came painted on. It looks incredible. I highly recommend doing it like this. And in the end, I got this right here. I did give it a little bit of panel lining too, using the gray pore type panel liner by Gundam Marker. And pretty much everything that I've used in this right now, you don't have to remember what I said. I'll throw it in the description so you can check it out. But yeah, that's how I did it. Let's check out what we got. So jumping right on into the aesthetics, and I have to say I am absolutely floored by how good this looks. Like I mentioned, out of box it looks like this right here. This is it with nothing done, so if you just build it, snip, 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 nothing else, this is what it will look like. Now this right here, this is what it will look like if you do pan line it, add the decals, and do one of the custom faces. Now I will mention, I didn't mention this during the build section, that you can use whatever eyes you want off of the decal stickers in whatever way you want. So inside the manual we've got multiple combinations of these eyes so you can have her winking, looking left, right with various different expressions. I just went with these kind of narrow, almost suspicious and sickened kind of eyes. That's the ones I went for. But overall this looks incredible. The small decals are great besides one issue up on the shoulders I'll mention later. Overall the detailing is fantastic and everything is color perfect right out of box. No painting, no stickers, nothing like that required whatsoever. So anyway, taking out the face that's on it right here and throwing on the default face, which I will admit is super, super easy. But again, we'll talk about that in the aesthetics. And let's just take a little bit of an overview look at what this looks like finished. So yeah, like I mentioned, this is incredibly impressive. So the print on the face right there has been done so well. Again, Bandai has been raising the game a lot with these particular figures. So they are, well, model kit, I should say. So they are almost, if not most of the way to the level of an anime figure now. If you're wondering about these little dots here and there on the surface, these are from snipping it out. That is because I only snipped them off once. When you're building a kit like this, you're meant to kind of snip it off the runner with the little bit sticking out, then snip it off or file it off from there to kind of get a clean finish. But I built this one quite quickly. Now, the only thing I could really complain about is the way the decals rest on the shoulder right here. And the reason for that is that little circular part you can see just under the TEC, that is starting to bulge out and it will do so on both sides because that is where the ball joint is underneath it. So just a quick look at the instructions right there. So that circular section is that bit that goes in there 
into the arm so it can push back out even with the decal there. Now the decal looks like it's on that particular circle which is what I was doing at first when I was building this kit. But when I took a look at the finished images here it seemed a little bit higher which looked a little bit better which is what I did. So that does mean the circular part is above that circular part and the whole thing just looks like it may have some issues in future if posed around a lot. I recommend cementing that piece in position so that does not happen. Besides that though everything looking great. So when it does come to the individual plastic colors inside of this box we've got quite a few. First off the hair I think is absolutely perfect. It's a phenomenal shade of yellow. The molding inside of that hair section is great. You can't see any of the seam lines because they're in smart places like where the hair splits and it just looks perfect. We've got the skin tone as well which is in a nice matte and speaking of matte the suit is in a matte as well maybe even a semi matte. You may or may not want that in a kind of gloss I'm not sure what the actual finish on the suit is meant to be and we do have matte on the grey as well. The grey detailing is phenomenal. We've got little bits of detail here and there. The belt section, the spine up the back, those scapula, the shoulder armor, boots, gauntlets, everything looking incredible. We do have some nice militaristic green as well on the knees, that little pouch on the side of the leg and overall everything on this just looks absolutely perfectly sculpted and designed. So onto a bit of a quick size comparison, this comes in at about 14 centimeters tall, so there it is side by side with a high grade Gundam and a master grade Gundam. So as you can see, it's more akin to the size of a high grade. I don't really have a whole bunch of anime figures lying around, but there's an SH figure arts that be in trunks. There's a bit of a bigger one, which is Frieza's second form. The only Figma I've knocking around, which is the nurse from Silent Hill 2. And finally, side by side with a pop-up parade. So now jumping into the accessories and here's everything that comes inside of the box and this is quite the loadout. First off we've got the absolutely giant axe, we've got a rifle, two forms of the pistol that is one for holding, one that is stored, we've got an extra pouch for on the waist, a grand total of, well, five hands that's not including the two attached for a grand total of seven and the same goes for the faces we've got three right here but one's already on the figure for that grand total of four and what that is we've got a pouch which looks kind of like a magazine pouch from the left hand side as well as a holster with the stored version of the pistol for a round on the right these attach via ball joints there's no reason you couldn't put them on either side except the pistol would be pointing the wrong way and they attach on and hold on good so when it comes to the hands we have in here, first off is the fists. These have what, well, they've been on the kit for the entire review so far. Now, it's kind of interesting when you're actually changing these out, the back of the hand does not come off. You just slide off the front of the hand and then slide, well, the kind of hand hand, and then slide on the one that you want. We have a whole multitude of these, including these very nice widespread ones, and the other ones are for using with the weapons, so I'm just going to kind of set this kit up in a bunch of different loadouts so you can see everything that's in here, including the faces and the hands, so let's go weapon by weapon. So the first weapon that we've got in here is the pistol. This is very nicely molded. The only thing that's a sticker on this are the uh, green sections on either side. That's there and the other side. But overall, it is very, very nicely designed. So in order to get this attached, I'm going to pop it into the left hand. This obviously doesn't make any sense considering the character is, well, right-handed and the holster is on the right-hand side. But it's more of a case of just trying out all the parts and to show that the weapons can be held in the left hand, which they can. Popping it in is super simple after changing the hands out. Also changing the hands out is super simple too. Next up, trying out another face. I'm going to go with the one with the wide open mouth. The eyes on this, I went with just kind of a standard pair looking forward. I think I might have got them a little bit, a little tiny bit too narrow, but once the hair pops on, it's not so bad. Swapping out the faces is the usual figure routine. You just pop off the front of the hair, pop on the face and pop the hair back on. Also, I will mention, do not forget to pop out the placeholder pistol that's in the holster so you can have an empty holster while she's holding on to the weapon and getting it into a little bit of a pose. And there is Shinomiya holding onto a pistol, obviously with the wrong hand, but just to show different accessory loadouts with this and overall looking really, really good. The shoulders move very, very nicely, I might add. So the arms can be brought forward at the shoulders in a really cool kind of way because of the way the scapula build into the body and into the shoulders. It's very, very nicely designed. So the next weapon we have in here is the rifle and just as beautifully detailed as we saw with the pistol. Once again, that green section right there, that is a sticker. But yeah, getting in nice and close there and everything is oh so nice. The build of this is nice too. There is quite a few parts to it, but not too many at the same time. And if you detail that up, especially brought out some of the detailing on it, it would really look technical and awesome. But one of 
if not the most unique aspects about this is the strap. It's made out of a kind of little kind of material. It's kind of got a faux leather kind of look on one side, the other side kind of like faux leathery things is just a kind of standard material, but it does mean you've got this proper kind of sling strap aspect to it, which is pretty awesome. I guess we're gonna see how it works out. So this time around when getting the rifle attached, we're gonna go with the right hand combination. So I will also mention we have one unique hand in here, which is a left hand, which is kind of copped. Basically you can use this for supporting the grip of the pistol or in regard to the rifle, you can have it holding up towards the front of it for a dual handed grip. So that's the one I'm gonna attach on. Again, it's the same. You pull the hands off the back of the hands which stay attached to the model kit, then you pop the hands on. As for the next head I'm gonna attach on, that is the one with the mask. Now I will mention this is a little more difficult than I thought it would be. First off, we've got two of these little strap kind of sections, just like we saw on the rifle for with this. So what you do is you actually attach on the face and then you need to bring those straps all the way around the back of the head and around to the front of the face again and attach them on in a kind of hooking kind of style. This is a little bit difficult because it can be hard to get them around. I recommend using something like a tweezers or something to make sure you can pull that around the right way, have the right grip while opening that little hole to hook it in place. Once you have it done, however, you just pop the mask on. You wouldn't even notice that that's the kind of way it's done. It just looks seamless and perfect. It's been done exceptionally, exceptionally well, but I recommend if you are popping this head on, or should I say face, you might want to leave it on. Popping the rifle into the hand is simple. You just remove one half of the magazine section, which gets rid of the guard for the hand, so you can slide it into the hand just like so. Now, this is a little bit difficult. I find these shoulders pop quite a bit, and at the same time, it's one of those split ball joints in the wrist, so to get it at the exact right angle that you can bring the hand downwards, and inwards into the body so you can rest the stock against your shoulder can be a little bit difficult at times. But once you get it pulled off, it looks incredible. So it doesn't really flow into the pose you might want it to. There's a little bit of work to getting it to it, but in the end, it does look extremely, extremely nice. And that is what she looks like holding onto the rifle. So the last weapon in here truly is the main event, and that, of course, is the axe. This is big, it's huge. The decal actually worked out quite well. Now, this I did not use any kind of top coat on because I'm gonna top coat the whole thing eventually because kind of brushing something this large won't really work out. As for moving parts, we do have a handle that moves out like so, so you can get a hand slid onto it and then close it up. And what else is for saying? Let's get it attached. So getting this attached into the hand was actually a lot easier than I expected. Once you kind of get used to the way the hands come off, it's a lot easier to do everything that you do with this. It's also a lot easier to get that mask face off than it is to get it on. Getting the axe attached is easy. You just pop out the handle like I mentioned, slide it into the hand. There's plenty of strength to hold it up, so here she is holding onto it fine. The popping of the shoulders only seems to happen when you're moving it, but if she's just kind of up on a shelf or whatever, she has no issue whatsoever holding this. This isn't supported by anything. So about to get this into the pose and I was going to go for a reference to see what it actually looked like for a pose and I realized that, I, well I saw this and that's, this was actually going to be a great sword first and that actually bums me out because I think that looks a whole lot cooler than an axe. But anyway, getting the axe into a pose is fine except the shoulders, they just like to pop a lot which is a bit of a pain. This doesn't happen when you're not moving the arms, it only happens when you're moving the arms. So when I was trying to get the other one into a bit of a kind of relaxed position, it just kept popping. Anyway, when it does get into a pose eventually, it does look fantastic. It's a big axe, it's pretty cool. This is it from a couple of angles and it would have been a whole lot cooler if it was a great sword. So finally now into the articulation and because I spent so much time like putting on the decals and all of that jazz I don't have too much time to actually spend on this So I'm just gonna throw it into the usual pose real quick and speaking of the decals and a reason I don't like handling these kits too much and why I don't tend to decal them before review is this is already starting to come off up here Even though it has been varnished that is mainly due to the fact that those circular segments are such a pain in the arse again build the shoulder pads and cement that circular part in permanently. Otherwise you're in for a little bit of a world of annoyance. The shoulders are kind of annoying anyway. Let's get into the pose. And there we go, there it is in the pose. It's okay, articulation wise it is quite good. The shoulders are diabolically annoying. I have to admit, between this little circular section, we're kind of doing what it does, the fact that these block and by these I mean the shoulder armors block which way it's gonna go. These scapula are nice the way they can actually move the whole arm forward 
but sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to actually get to that. Raising the arm up is pretty much impossible without them eventually giving up like that, but besides the shoulders, it does work out quite, quite well. I do believe there is actually a little bit of extra articulation in the body there that, well, I can only kind of show what it was like when I was building it, but it did have some what looked like rolling joints to the sides of it, but it was locked into position by the little spinal part that pops through. So maybe if you cut off the spinal part, you can get some more articulation, maybe to the back or something like that. But either way, very good articulation, but a little bit limited at the shoulders in the upwards kind of direction. And yeah, that right there is it for the review. So yeah, the only real negative thing I can mention is the shoulders can pop, the armors kind of get in the way, and the way the ball joint has been integrated into them kind of can destroy your decals. Besides that though, it is fantastic. Aesthetically, it looks amazing. This to me looks a little bit more close to what you'd see in the actual manga than what you'd see in the anime. I know a lot of people had a little bit of an issue with what she looked like or what some of the characters did look like in the anime. The kind of a little bit of a change in style, but this is a nice happy middle ground, I feel. You do have a lot of options in here when it comes to faces, but there is a skill level involved in kind of getting all this kind of attached. So it is a little bit of an intermediate build if you want the extra faces. When it comes to the accessories, all these are pretty much perfect. I love them all. The weapons are cool. There's lots of options. You can try out a whole bunch of different loadouts and it all just works perfectly. Then finally, when it does come to the articulation, again, it's just those shoulders, but besides that, it can pose very, very nicely as you can see right now. I find it very, very nice. It's a whole lot of fun. It's gonna look very, very good up on a shelf, but the posing, especially at the arms, is a little bit limited. Anyway, if you do want one of your own, I got mine through Hobby Link Japan, link in the description. As always, thank you so, so much for watching and make sure to come back for more model kit reviews and I'll see you next time. I can't end this video right here without the usual thanks saying thank you so, so much for watching. This video and this channel would not be possible without each and every single one of you, including those of you who support me over on the channel memberships and on Patreon, including Abraxas, Caleb Engelhart, Go Little Rockstar, Joe, or G59061, Shadow Wolf 179, Ten Soldier YT, and Van Fawn.